Coming up next to the stage, we have Janet. I just want to say that you're the music. Hi there. I, for those of you who might not know me, I am an editor of a couple literary magazines. I run Scars Publications. And um, for those who know me from the past, I had, since living here in Texas, two books released of poetry that were called Pharaoh Memes like pheromones, but they're for memes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, those were out uh, in 2017. And in the beginning of next month, there will be a third Pharaoh Memes book out. And it is of haiku, Twitter verse, Instagram, and poetry. And I'm going to mock up the cover here because it's not out yet. <laughs> but um, I was going to read something that is going to be at the end of this book. And then a couple other pieces for you. This first one, because I've decided to write a poem every day, of the year, I wrote this one on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And it is called, Our Color, Our Gender, Our Creed. There is a house inside of me, and this house will, st and this house will stand strong. I've got the wrong verses here. I'm gonna start on the other side. I'm like, it's the wrong side. I have to read the right side first, sorry. There's a house inside of me. It is a house with a rich heritage, brimming with the knowledge of how our souls have flourished and about how it can all be so quickly taken away. There is a house inside of me that has had to shut down to hide everything away because all oh, those who didn't look like me decided that I was nothing and treated me accordingly. There is a house inside of me. Its pulse has an infectious rhythm that we've had to stifle to hide from your generic white bread mentality, your white bread world. We only let it out when we're alone to, to save us from your madness. There is a house inside of me. I, I've hidden it away. I've sealed it up and placed it deep within, brimming with my history and my future. And I don't let it out when people can't think of me as human. There is a house inside of me. I put boards over the windows to save myself from your storm. With your rap, I've learned to not fight back, only because my captor won't listen. There is a house inside of me, and this house will stand strong even after you have raped me, beaten me, tortured me, tried to kill me, treated me as nothing. But you were so wrong. And there is a house inside of me, and what you don't understand is that this house will outlast yours. Trust me, if your house is built on distrust and such a blatant disrespect, then your house is bound to collapse. Because after all this time, and after my wanting to fight, I have learned that passive resistance is only a part of my story. Because in these struggles, I have gained a wisdom and a connection that is beyond this house inside of me, beyond this sharing, this inquisitive mentality. So, what I want you to remember is, this house is a symbol for all like me, and for those not like me, too. Because I have a dream that everyone who has suffered like this, and even for those who have not, they should share their stories with all of the world, no matter our color, our gender, our creed. This is my dream, because this is how we truly grow. As I said, uh, with Scars Publications, I run a couple of different magazines. One of them is CCMD Magazine. I've got a collection book here that I'm going to read from at the end, but um, I have put out a letter because back in the day it didn't, wasn't published in uh, Amazon globally, and I had saddles stitched them in the 90s, and I have a thing online, if anybody wants a really old issue, let me know, and someone just did, and they wanted 
May 1996, and so I put it into book form. <laughs> and I've got it right here, and for that reason, I thought I would read something from this. CCD Magazine, its full name is Children, Churches, and Daddies. It's named after a poem talking about the dysfunctionality of those things. Because back in the day, snail mail, I'm like, hi, I'm a Christian mother of three, and these are my rhyming poems. And I'm like, all right, so that's not what this says, but um, anywho. <laughs> um, this had a bunch of stuff in it, including the letters to the editor. This had to be edited down because the actual issue had news stories and things about all of the um, senators email and snail mail. I'm like, I can't include it in this. And then my philosophy monthly section, I had part one of the Unabomber manifesto. And I'm like, I can't put that in that all, just an online connection. But something from the letters to the editor section is this poem, People's Rights Misunderstood. I had a dream the other night. I was walking down the street in the city, and a man came up to me, a skinny man. He, he had lost his hair. And he walked right up to me, and he told me that no one cares anymore. And he took my hand, and he asked me to care about him. I, I'm not supposed to be like this, he said. I, I, I'm not homeless, you know. I, I have AIDS. And I wanted to tell him that someone did care, that, that he didn't have to die alone. But you know how sometimes you can't do something in your dream no matter how hard you try? Well, my mouth was open. It was wide open, but no words were coming out. And you know, I feel afraid to go to sleep tonight. I'm afraid that a pregnant woman is gonna come up to me in my dream and ask me for a hanger, and I'll tell her there has to be another way. And she tells me that this is the way she chooses. And I'm afraid a woman will come up to me and tell me she doesn't want to live because she's just been raped and her world doesn't make sense anymore. And I want to tell her that she can make it, that the one in three women are raped in their lifetimes and they all make it. And besides, the world doesn't make sense to anyone. And she tells me that that doesn't make her feel any better. And I'm afraid that I won't be able to walk down that city, street in that city again without it looking like a Quentin Tarantino movie where everybody's pointing guns at each other. Yes, Mr. NRA, you are so right. I feel so safe now knowing that everyone out there has a gun and that there are more gun shops and gas stations and that everyone is so willing to do the killing. that is in this book and it's also going to be in, I'm trying to find it, um, it's a single page in this. It is also something that's going to appear in this collection book, but it is also in a CCND issue collection book, which is being released like today or tomorrow, and it's called A Revolution of Modern Life. It is an issue collection book of the first half of 2019 issues and shop books and stuff. It's being put into this really huge volume that you can buy through Amazon, which is double plus cool. Because it's in here and I also have it in big copy here, I'm going to read it from this one. This is a poem that is from that CCND book and it will also be in Pharaoh Memes that is out in the next month. And this is called for far too many years. After news reports of fires along the coast of California and through national forests filled half of a newscast, a reporter then said on live TV, we now have to learn how to live with fire. Live with fire, he says, after I escaped the gates of hell and am now forever forced into purgatory. I spent every waking moment licked by flames. I know what it's like to be parched because all this time I've been scorched. And I wonder why everyone else hasn't been living with hellfire all this time already. It's been around us since the beginning of time for far too many years for it to not find you. <laughs> All this time, it's been breathing down your neck, teasing you, whispering to you, calling to you. Thank you.
on a lot of my kids is texting me. <laughs> Alright, give it up for Janet!